Hello and welcome to another episode of Dubai Interviews. Today we're going to talk to very interesting businessman. His name is Panos Manolopoulos and he is Vice Chairman and Managing Partner of State & Chase International. I have come in uh, 2007, the beginning of 2007, uh, in uh, the middle of a very turbulent uh, period uh, for Dubai. And I say turbulent because uh, it uh, was a period of the big boom and a very big development. The reason I have come is that uh, at Stanton Chase International we had a number of clients and uh, we were serving, serving them from abroad with uh, suitcase consultants. So it happened uh, to identify a number of opportunities, one of which was a very big uh, company called Nahil that we all know, that uh, they have assigned us a very, very big project. So one of us, one of the senior partners of Stanton Chase had to come here, identify the opportunities and also serve the client and the, the, the already existing international clients. So it was in the beginning of 2007 um, I have come here for uh, a period of six months and uh, seven years down the road I'm still here uh, growing and developing uh, Stanton Chase uh, International and our other activities. Uh, my very first impression was uh, that it was a chaotic uh, a, a place with uh, people uh, running around only for business opportunities and uh, my first um, uh, report uh, to the board uh, was that, uh, guys, uh, this is an El Dorado, and El Dorado has a positive and a negative uh, aspect. Uh, the positive aspect is that there are indeed a lot of business opportunities, but also the negative aspect is uh, that there are a number of unstructured issues. We are in human talent business. Stanton Chase is one of the top uh, executive search firms in the world. And um, what uh, we usually do is that we are helping big multinational organizations, governments and uh, regional conglomerates uh, to attract, develop and retain human talent. And uh, this is uh, the reason that we exist in the world. We have offices uh, in 75 locations in all four continents. And uh, personally, I'm serving uh, in the global board of directors as uh, a vice chair. What has happened during the crisis, it was a so-called clearing process in which the good quality companies, especially in human talent, uh, prevailed and uh, both the clients, the, the companies, the governments became more mature, they wanted to spend more time and to invest more time and money on the very critical issue of human talent, but also the candidates became more mature. As I'm saying, they were doing a better homework before uh, uh, flying in in Dubai. And um, that helped a lot companies like Stanton Chase and especially our company uh, to take a very good piece of the pie and to develop uh, faster than we expected uh, in the years from 2009 up to date. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Dubai has uh, evolved, as you said very correctly, in, on a fast pace. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities in all the industries, but uh, there is a very big space still for uh, small and medium enterprises. Dubai is a, a multicultural uh, place. It is a place in which you need to have your ears and your eyes open uh, from in, in all aspects. They should understand that this is a place in which you have to see to the west, but you have to see also to the east as well. And uh, one of the things that the companies should understand once they come here is that they are not serving only the region, which is GCC, but also they can expand uh, to the overall Middle East, Levant, North Africa, even, even Far East. Uh, Dubai is a multicultural place with people from different worlds, with uh, different uh, aspects, different aspirations, different philosophies. If you do not network in, uh, in Dubai, if you, if you are not networking in this part of the world, uh, you have a handicap. 
uh, you cannot develop your business. You cannot understand the nature of the business. You cannot adapt yourself in the, the nature of, of this environment, in this market, and you cannot have a future. Networking is extremely important. And I'm not seeing it only from the narrow perspective of the sales, but I'm seeing it also from the wider perspective of the overall philosophy of the development of a company. One of the flaws of this type of organizations, uh, these, uh, let's say, networks, clubs, is that uh, once you join them after a while, you know they fade out. Their activity, you know, is slowing down. And uh, sometimes, you know, the members are questioning, is it uh, worth continuing my membership with that? Why am I paying a membership after all? And what do I gain by that? The, the important element, the advantage of CEO clubs is that over the past years I have seen a tremendous development and instead of decreasing its activity, the activity is increasing according to the developments of, of Dubai. I come from the western part of the world and I have lived most of my uh, time in East Europe. And I can feel now, because I'm traveling a lot, that uh, in general, uh, in Western East Europe and in the rest of the world, you know, there are not so positive vibes. What is important in Dubai and in UAE is that there is a positive vibe that comes from His Highness, the Sheikhs, and the whole environment of, of the people. You feel positive and you feel optimistic. Optimism is one of the basic ingredients of doing good businesses. It's like the stock market. You know, you feel nice, you feel optimistic, you want to invest, you want to do things, and you have the appetite in the morning to say, listen, I'm going to my office and I have to plan ahead. The traditional West has lost this, I mean, uh, for many years, and they are trying, we are trying, you know, hard to, to regain it. but. In Dubai here, there are some very inherent, traditional, positive vibes in doing business. And this is, in my opinion, much more important even from the uh, infrastructure part. I do not enjoy the very indoor places, I would say marina. The marina place is a very nice uh, place and especially uh, lately, with the new developments and the new uh, mall uh, and the JBR and all the working uh, areas like this. Now, I mean, uh, I would be uh, also, it would be good to say that uh, going into these big malls and feeling all these, you know, vibes, uh, the commercial vibes and this consumer, you know, uh, vibes is also a very nice uh, place to be. But also, you know, Dubai and the UAE has a number of nice places to go outside. I mean, when the weather is good, to go out in the desert and uh, to, to travel, you know, to the outskirts, even crossing the borders and going to Oman. Um, I'm diving a lot, you know, I like to, to explore different uh, uh, parts of, of the sea, around the Arabic Sea. I think it's a very, very nice place and despite what people believe when they haven't been here and they travel, believing that it is just a hot place with a lot of sand, I think there are so many things to do, uh, so many places to go that you need a lifetime to explore. Uh, if you would ask me a few years ago, I would say, being a European, that I'm missing this um, cultural touch in which you can find, let's say, in West Europe, uh, being in Paris or in Budapest or in Prague or in London, in which, you, you know, you can just uh, open up a newspaper and uh, go to a nice theater or visit a gallery or something. But that would be the answer that I would give you a few years ago because the developments that have been made towards this end, you know, uh, makes uh, uh, this uh, less, let's say, uh, desirable in the sense that there are so many places now that you can do, uh, so that you can go. It's the opera coming up, uh, there are a number of galleries, there are a lot of film festivals, uh, there is a lot of effort uh, for this cultural part. 
again, if you would ask me this question a few years ago, I would tell you that uh, I wouldn't have seen Dubai uh, as the place to be for the rest of my life. I have reconsidered. I um, think that Dubai, and this is another thing that we have found uh, lately, is a place that uh, you can spend a considerable uh, part of your life. And uh, in the way that the global markets, businesses, cultures are developed, I think that a number of expats started to feel this place, uh, this place as their home. You, nev you can never know uh, what the future holds, especially for us that we're very busy, we're running big org organizations, there might be another assignment. But uh, I think that uh, one of the strong candidate options for me to be might be Dubai. And that's the end of today's episode of Dubai Interviews. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share the interviews with your friends and colleagues. And if you have some interesting candidate, do not be afraid to get in touch with us. Thank you for watching and see you next time.